All right, so we're moving on to chapter two. We're going to be uh, talking about conservation of energy. Uh, we're going to be looking at all the energy initial, all the energy final, finding the change in energy. Uh, and that's what the first law of thermodynamics is. It's con con energy is conserved. Uh, so you look here at the different types of energy we might see in these problems. Kinetic energy, potential energy, internal energy, and flow work or flow energy. That, that's kind of the abstract, hardest one to, to look at. We'll talk about that one. But uh, kinetic energy, you all know this, right? One half mv squared. Uh, but in this class, we might be looking at total kinetic energy, or we might be looking at the energy uh, per unit mass. Remember that those qualities, those properties per unit mass were specific. So if it's talking about specific energy, uh, the units will give it away. Uh, if it's lowercase, you know, energy per unit mass, then our formula is just one half v squared, right? It's kind of taking our one half mv squared and dividing it by the mass. Uh, okay, so a few things, you know, to look at. It might say specific or total or per time. Uh, the units might give it away uh, or these variables uh, in general. Capital uh, is total, lowercase is specific, and if you've got this dot over it right here, that dot is like the derivative, the, the kind of the per unit time. Uh, so uh, total, if we're trying to calculate total kinetic energy, that's one half mv squared. The units are kilojoules. If we are um, looking at specific, it's just one half v squared. Um, and here, this is this is kind of power. It's kind of work per divided by time, energy per time, uh, and so maybe kilowatts would be our units. We need to, um, we'll, we'll kind of go over the units some, uh, whereas meters per second quantity squared, uh, you know, is just joules per kilogram. Um, there's some interesting units here. Watt is a joule per second. Um, okay, so anyway, kinetic energy, one half mv squared if we're looking at total. Potential energy, total would be mgh, right? mgh is our uh, total potential energy. If it's specific, then it's just gh. And if it's per time, it's m dot gh. We'll talk about this m dot on the next page, sorry, right here and there. Uh, that's the mass flow rate. That's the mass per unit time. Okay, and then there's internal energy. Uh, that uh, is capital U, lowercase u, or u dot. That's kind of a, on a molecular level how much energy is inside of the fluid. Uh, so we won't really calculate that. We won't have a formula for that. Uh, in the future, we could find that in a property table on the back of our book. Uh, and then there's flow work. Flow work, uh, it's pressure times volume or pressure over rho. Rho is the density here. Or pressure times volumetric flow rate. Uh, but actually, it's not exactly just pressure. It's the change in pressure. It's the change in pressure. If there is no change in pressure, then there's going to be no flow. Uh, and so that flow work is the change in pressure times the volume. All right, so anyway, here are four different types of energy uh, that we can be looking at in our problems when we're calculating, hey, how much energy is there to begin with? How much energy is there final? Was there any change in energy? Um, these are the four main types of energy we'll be calculating for now. Let's talk about this flow work. Um, flow work is a pressure force pushing a fluid through an open system. Uh, so imagine that we have an open system, we have an inlet and an outlet. Uh, let's pretend like this inlet, in order for fluid to go into the inlet, there needs to be a pressure pushing it into the inlet. So let's pretend like there's some imaginary piston right here that, that is pushing this fluid in the blue uh, little volume into um, our um, into our, across our boundary, into our system. Uh, in order for fluid to go into our system, there's got to be a force pushing it into our system, and it's going kind of a distance 
L. This force right here would be, let's see, pressure equals force over area. So we could just say a force is a pressure times an area right here. We're here, the area is the cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional area right here of our um, inlet. Uh, times the distance and this distance right in this case would be L and what is area cross-sectional area times L that's kind of the volume of the inlet so here that's why our our equation for flow work is pressure which is kind of a change in pressure the ch difference in pressure from outside to inside uh, times the volume right here pressure or change in pressure times the volume of the inlet volume of that inlet or that pipe let's say of that pipe right here okay uh, so anyway if we want to calculate all the energy all the total energy capital E then we would add up the internal energy plus potential energy plus kinetic energy plus the flow work. Um, if we wanted all to calculate all the specific energy, uh, lowercase letters, we'd add up all the internal energy, potential energy, kinetic energy, flow work, specific. And if this was a power type of problem, if we wanted to calculate all the power uh, of our system, or maybe the change, then we would have, you know, these capital, these, uh, the uh, mass rate of change, the per unit time uh, of potential energy, kinetic energy, flow work, and internal energy. Uh, but l look for these keywords, look for these units, look for these capitals um, and lowercase and mass flow rates um, to kind of make sure you're using the right equations, using the right formulas. Okay, now uh, you'll s remember this th this m dot. We haven't talked much about that. Let's talk about that. The mass flow rate, because in an open system we might have mass going into and out of our system, so we need to calculate the mass flow rate. Mass flow rate. The m dot. We need to calculate the m dot. This is the amount of mass flowing. Per ton. This is the amount of mass flowing per ton. Mass per unit time. The units for m dot would be kilograms per second. Right. The units for mass flow rate would be kilograms per second. Now we also might want to calculate the volumetric flow rate. This is the volumetric flow rate. Capital V dot. And that would be the volume per unit time, m cubed divided by seconds would be the units for that, right? How much vol? What's the volume of fluid that is entering my system uh, per unit time? All right. So you know, imagine you've got some inlet, some pipe, and you've got fluid going through here at some velocity. We want to keep track of how much mass is coming in, or maybe we want to keep track of how much volume is coming in. Or really, you know, our equation calls for an m dot. We, we need the m dot. Um, our equation calls for a volumetric flow rate. We might need that. Are these related? Are these related? Uh, probably, and they look kind of similar. Uh, instead of kilograms per second, we've got meters cubed per second. Um, how could we kind of convert between mass flow rate, volumetric flow rate? Are they related? Uh, units would give me a clue here. Uh, they are related by density, right? They're related by density. Does it make sense? Let me see this. That m dot would be equal to rho times v dot. m dot would be equal to rho times v dot. Let's think, see if the units work out here. Kilograms per second is the same as uh, what is density? Density is kilograms per meter cubed. Yeah, and meters cubed per second. Yeah, that, that works out. That is a great formula right here to know off the top of your head or, you know, to have on your formula sheet. I've, I've kind of mentioned that um, on the test you'll, get, you'll be able to 
write your own 3 inch by 5 inch index card front and back full of equations. Uh, that's one, but you should, you should know that. You should have that memorized. So, you know, for instance, if they give us the V dot and the row, then, then we, we've really got the M dot. We've re really got the mass flow rate. Uh, now, if we thought about and looked at this um, volumetric flow rate, is it, it's related to the velocity. It's related to the velocity. Let me think about this. Uh, the volumetric flow rate uh, that has units of meters cubed per second. Um, our velocity is going at a meter per second. Um, if I take the velocity, which is kind of a length per second, uh, and thought about multiplied this cross-sectional area, uh, the volumetric flow rate would be equal to the velocity times the cross-sectional area. The units, meters per second, area, meters squared. The units work out, and thinking about this length times the cross-sectional area, that kind of is the volume. Uh, so we can kind of extend this. Rho VA, okay, but be careful. This time this V is the velocity. All right. Okay, so sometimes, you know, we're looking for the mass flow rate. Maybe we've got an equation that, that we need the mass flow rate. We need the M dot. But the book, being mean, doesn't tell us the mass flow rate, but it does tell us the cross-sectional area of the pipe. It does tell us the average velocity of the fluid in there. We know the row of the fluid. Okay, we use those, right, to get the mass flow rate so that we can do one half M dot v squared if, if that's what it calls for or m dot gh if that's what it calls for okay okay uh energy flow rate if we want to find the energy maybe flowing into our system per second or per unit time like e dot m dot times lowercase e the specific energy Specific energy uh, times the mass flow rate would give us the energy flow rate. So, you know, again, if we're given this specific energy, multiplying it times the mass flow rate gives us the um, energy per unit time or the energy flow rate. We can look at the units, units, units. This this class more than any of the others I teach. Units are maybe a little bit more difficult. But they're definitely a lot more helpful. The units will help us make sure we're on the same page. I'll make sure we are answering what we're trying to find. Answering what we're trying to find. Okay. Uh, this energy flow rate is kind of a power that would have units of watts or kilowatts. I don't know if I've mentioned before, uh, but a watt is a joule per second. A kilowatt is a kilojoule per second second right here so if we look at the units uh, mass would be kilograms per second energy is kilojoules per kilogram yeah kilojoules per second we'd be in kilowatts okay uh, and then lastly uh, mechanical energy is the energy that can be converted to work completely and directly by an ideal mechanical uh, device. All right, we can convert kinetic energy into work. We can convert potential energy into work. We can convert flow work into work. Uh, but <clears throat> here we go. You, of, of the energies we've talked about up to this point, those four energies on the first page of this chapter, uh, internal energy is not a part of the mechanical energy. All right, we can't convert internal energy completely into work. Uh, so if it asks for the change in mechanical energy or if we're trying to calculate how much work we could get out of a system, uh, if this was the change in lowercase e, all right, lower, so this is specific, all right, let's see here. If we want to find the change in mechanical energy, 
then we need to find the change in kinetic energy, which is one half v two squared minus v one squared, or v you know final squared minus v initial squared. So go back to that first page. We're looking at these lowercase specific energies, specific energies, and the change in the total. I mean, the change in the mechanical energy would be the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy, that would be GH, but GH2 minus H1, or H final minus H initial, plus flow work. So this would be P2 over minus P1 divided by rho, because uh, that was P over rho was kind of our flow work um, equation for specific flow work. All right, so now we can start calculating the change in mechanical energy. Uh, maybe it might be the change in total mechanical energy. Maybe it's the change in the flow rate or the mechanical energy per unit time. So we, looking back at those equations, we'd be using the um, you know dotted equations, the per the power change in unit time equations. Okay. Okay, so you'll see we'll work out a lot of problems. I like to work out problems in order to teach. That's how I learn. I learned by working out problems, so I kind of teach by working out problems. So let's take all that that we talked about, and let's uh, put it into practice, right? Let's work out some problems.